Here's a major contributor to falsely elevated potassiums, IV infusions. As you know, potassium is one of the most common fluids infused in patients. So when we draw above an infusion site, even if it has been temporarily discontinued, we risk contaminating the sample. CLSI, the Clinical and Laboratory Standards Institute, cautions against such draws, but they don't forbid it. They leave it up to the facility to evaluate the risks and establish their own policy. Playing it safe means allowing draws below temporarily discontinued IVs, but not above. According to CLSI, such samples should be drawn after the nurse shuts off the IV and allowing two minutes to pass. Although discarding a volume of blood is not in the standards, I recommend it whenever possible. I have heard anecdotally of samples drawn below temporarily discontinued IVs being contaminated by the infusing fluids. We all know how draws from vascular access devices threaten sample integrity, and potassium is high on the list of affected analytes. We like to have the nurse flush the line, then withdraw twice the dead space volume prior to collecting the sample to be tested for potassium, six times the dead space volume for coags. So let's make sure an adequate volume of blood is withdrawn and discarded prior to collecting the sample to be tested. Those who investigate questionable potassium should see whether or not either of the samples from which the results are being compared were drawn above, below, or directly from a line infusing fluids. Before we get off the subject of drawing from vascular access devices, be aware that some devices actually contribute potassium to the sample being withdrawn especially if it's a newly inserted IV and blood is being withdrawn before the fluids are connected. The culprit is benzalkonium heparin catheters, which contain benzalkonium chloride as a surfactant.